Someone said to me once that what we're doing is like going to a football game, taking snapshots every few minutes, and then trying to figure out the rules of football. <laughs> and I think that's a pretty good analogy. Well, I guess this started around 2003 when uh, Janis Hoydru, Henry Chapman and I went to SLAC, one of the DOE labs near Stanford, uh, where the Department of Energy had the tremendous courage to spend 600 million on a, the world's first X-ray laser. as a really uh, high stakes gamble that has paid off hugely. So there's an application procedure that you have to go through in order for you to get time to use it. So once you decide which molecule to study, before you can even put in a credible application, you pretty much have to have done everything you can do at the traditional synchrotron sources. You have to grow crystals of the, of the proper size. You have to position them so that the x-rays can hit them just right. Each crystal is injected into the x-ray beam one after the other in a serial fashion. And it's shot by an intense x-ray pulse that leads to the explosion of the crystal. So the x-rays are coming along uh, 120 x-ray pulses a second, sufficiently intense to drill a hole in stainless steel. But before that damage sets on, damage takes time, the crystal has already scattered the x-rays. Then you have to measure the diffraction pattern with specialized x-ray detectors. The real heroes of this work are the students because they are the ones that have to keep traveling to do the experiments, going off to Slack near Stanford and sleeping in a tunnel, eating bad food for a week, camping on the floor, getting the results. So it's grueling, very hard work. Your shifts are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. You're always there beforehand and after. And as much as possible, you're collecting data the whole time. The actual system study might include G-protein coupled receptors, photosystem one or photosystem two that are involved in converting visible light to energy in plants. We have actually discovered the structure of both photosystem one and photosystem two. One of the ultimate goals of the BioXFEL project is to make molecular movies. We want to see how molecules move and change their shape in time and how they perform their biological functions at the atomic level. We have used the free electron laser to discover the first snapshot of that process. But we are not there at the movie state yet. The way to think about it is like this. We imagine that electrons are the glue that hold atoms together. And we'd like to see that glue drying. 